Thank you for joining us at the Roundtable. Brought to you by Community Education Arts, a nonprofit organization based in Noblesville, Indiana. I'm Alice Cavanis Gober, President of CE Arts. And I'm Sarah E. Morin, Secretary of CE Arts. Let's sit down at the Roundtable. Sarah E., what are, that is the end of our presentations, but um, you, we want to say a couple things before we go into our Q&A. Yes. So first off, thank you everyone who submitted and a thank you everyone who came out tonight to share your own works and also to support the other artists. Or Some of you I know are not artists in this book yourself, but just came out to support. Thank yes, you. You're thank amazing. you for doing that for sure. Yep. Go ahead and mark your calendars for December 31st, 2022, because that will be our next submission deadline for the Polk Street Review. Um, theme yet to be decided, so we will announce details uh, forthcoming, but mark your calendars. <laughs> we also will be announcing uh, in the near-ish future our NICE book selections. NICE stands for Noblesville Interdisciplinary Creativity Expo, and each year we pick four pieces Four pieces of classic literature, sometimes books, sometimes plays, sometimes poetry, and then we analyze them in depth, and we also create all types of art inspired by them, and we podcast about them. And so we will be announcing those soon. If you have suggestions, now's the time to drop those in the chat, because we'll be deciding soon. Um, but now, uh, if, if you need to go, thank you for coming. Uh, that's great. But we now invite you to um, unmute yourself and you can ask some other creator a question. Um, you can tell us a little bit more about what inspired you to create your own piece. Uh, the floor is open. Yeah, everybody unmute because uh, this is going to be like a free for all almost. I'm not exactly sure how we'll call on people. I'm looking at all of you on the screen. So if you put your hand up, I'll be able to see that you're interested in saying something. Um, okay, Mona, I saw that hand shoot up right away. So you can go first. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I just wanted to say I love Jenny and Patrick's poem and essay. I mentioned that in the chat. I was so moved. Uh, your internet did blink out a minute, so I'm definitely going to read that essay because I was there until you weren't, <laughs> so I, I have it marked in my book. It is so moving. Uh, and also, the link in my bio, uh, I had to change my uh, link tree in my bio, but I'm going to put my Twitter in the chat if anyone is interested. That's great. That's yeah. great to Thank do you. that. And anybody else Thank who wants you. to share their contact info that way. Yeah, I'm so <laughs> impressed by by both of your writings. I was like, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, Jenny, I want to chime in that the poem that we asked you to present, I that was my favorite of your uh, poetic submissions this year. I loved all your submissions, don't get me wrong, and I believe you won an award for Stay at Home Sheep, but yeah. uh, When Winter Steals My Colors just really hit home for me. And Patrick, you know, we've we've emailed about uh, Mio and, and your Yugoslavian uh, adventures on the ship, and uh, <laughs> yeah. so, you know, I feel like that's, that's just such a fascinating uh, story that you submitted to us. And I do encourage everybody to read it and enjoy it in its full, mm. uh, full spirit rather than just the excerpt, which I did love the excerpt too. So, you know, and by the way, I need to do a shout out to Sarah E who gave me all kinds of credit at the beginning of this, but Sarah E did all the excerpting, which is a very hard job to do. So the yeah. excerpts that you heard tonight were excerpted by Sarah E. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but that's how I say it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like eggs, My excerpted. That's <laughs> poetic license. You're That's right. To... I'm I'm a Looney Tune by this point. I've just been having so much fun listening to everybody's uh, presentations. But um, now, George, I did want to ask you to just tell us a little bit about the the Gaia philosophy or theory that you're talking about. Because again, as you guys read this edition of the Polk Street Review, you 
you will find that theme of nature and conservation and environmentalism comes through in several different pieces. Um, Christine Staley's pieces, for example, which I hope Christine will talk about her uh, art pieces in a minute too. But George, if you just want to give us a little bit about uh, Gaia theory, that would be great. Well, first of all, I want to thank you for putting, you put the poem on, on a page right below this beautiful photo of, of the natural world there at oh. sunset or sunrise. And I just thought it was a perfect placement for it. So thank you for doing that. Well, I try to, I try to match things uh, as closely as, you know, that, that makes sense to me. That doesn't always work, but I thought that was kind of a good one to go with your piece. So, Well, the Gaia hypothesis was developed by a chemist named mm -hmm. Lover. And uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. And uh, it, it, it says that uh, the idea is that um, the earth is really like a living organism. Um, it, it, it's based on systems theory. And if you're in, ever read the Buckminster Fuller, it really it came along about the same time he was talking about systems theory. And uh, we have, you have whole systems which uh, behave as if the whole, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts, but then you superimpose multiple systems who behave that way and you get, and you get this complex uh, behavior, which is like an organism. So the idea is that the, the earth has defense mechanism, just like, just like any other organism. And if, if you abuse the earth, if you are um, uh, hurting it and so forth, it, 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 will have, it will have the vet defense mechanisms that come into play as it strives to reestablish homeostasis or balance. And uh, uh, that, that I, I, in, in the context of the, of the global pandemic we've been through, it's like this virus is one of, the, one of those defense mechanisms that the earth is trying to tell us that, that uh, we need to change our behavior uh, because we're abusing the, the organism, so to speak, and it's going to resort to its defense mechanisms. So that's the Gaia hypothesis. And it's very much like the Native American view. Yeah. That uh, you, if you try to, if you harm Mother Earth, then Mother Earth will, will punish you, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Humanity will suffer. Anyways, uh, so I was walking or hiking in Rocky Mountain National Park and the, I, the, the idea of the, my exposure to the Gaia hypothesis came many years after that. But the two kind of fit together because the uh, experience I had hiking was such a beautiful experience up in the mountains there that, that uh, it, it inspired this particular poem. And I wrote it in this versus reverses style. Um, but the, uh, even though the Gaia hypothesis, I, even though I wrote the poem before the Gaia hypothesis, uh, before I, I learned about the Gaia hypothesis, it just fits. It just fits together. I, mean, I was thinking in the same mode as those who see the earth as a, as a living being, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it yeah. really came across well in your poem. It really, all that came across and it, you know, it's one of those poems that I can read it over and over and over. And just every time I read it, I kind of feel more and get more from it. So, um, yeah, we've got somebody in the chat and this is, it's funny. I was just about to say this, uh, Christine, would you, uh, like to talk to us a little bit more about your art and your pieces and just your process and everybody, um, if I, I'm not sure if I said it, I think I did, but go ahead and feel free to unmute if you want, because some of you don't have faces, you just have names. And so I can't tell if you have your hand up or not. <laughs> so, Christine, are you there? There you are. Okay. You're unmuted. Your face disappeared. Okay. Aha, there she is. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, I, um, it was an interesting process for me to, to put together, you know, the three paintings. Um, I, I did, you know, get the book, um, you know, from the library through inter <laughs> library loan. Mm -hmm. And um, I was very struck by um, a baccalaureate who had, um, had such a, a feeling for you know his daughter and for his his family and it just kind of rang home about you know what the the true meaning of parenthood is and how you know spending time you know with with children can really help um 
you know, solidify, you know, what their, their life goals would be, you know, including their career or, you know, their interest in family life. Um, so the, uh, the paintings kind of um, evolved over, you know, a period of a few weeks. And uh, they actually started out quite differently. But, um, you know, I, I really, um, you know, I didn't put in the clock until the very end. Um, I didn't put in the angel until the, the end. Um, you know, the food, you know, breakfast is such a strange, you know, meal to, you know, have a, um, have a painting of. But it gave me an opportunity to create a mathematical equation. <laughs> <laughs> You know, including, you know, two equals two, you know, I yes. guess. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we just loved all those little details that you put in this painting that yeah. come, you know, out of his writing um, and, you know, are the, the, reflect, the reflective kind of nature of the quote that we chose from Gaston Bachelard. And, and I also kind of dove a little deeply into him once we'd selected the, the theme and, you, your paintings just really, I felt like they really kind of hit hit the nail on the head when it comes to, you know, his, the, the spirit of what he was writing about and everything and what he believed in. And then you had your, this painting yeah, and then good. the anima ones were just on point as well. So kudos to you. Great job. Oh, well, thank you. It was a, a fun exercise. I really enjoyed it. So Yes, um, in his writings, he talks about anima and animus and how different those two personalities are. Um, and so, you know, it's kind of fun to, you know, put together the character of anima and, you know, have her, you know, be excited to be in an environment, a natural environment mm -hmm. where, you know, she is a creator, you know, whether it's gardening or, you know, being, uh, you know, I have her kind of in her own home setting. Mm -hmm. um, I did put her as an older female because, you um, you know, during the pandemic, of course, you know, people are, you know, in a home setting more often than, you know, being in Yeah, a you really expanded setting. her story because what we have in the book is, is, is like an excerpt of what, you know, <laughs> what you presented tonight, kind of a, re we have a reverse excerpt situation. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, one of the things I loved about your little descriptives that you sent in with your paintings were, were that it, you know, I got the feeling that there were like almost two different stages in life in, in a couple of those pieces. And so in those two pieces that had anima in them. And so I really, I really liked that story and you gave us a fuller version of that tonight. So that was really cool. I definitely can relate to all the health issues and disabilities kind of stuff um, and, and the pandemic stuff for myself personally. So that was all very exciting and interesting to hear you say that. Uh, great job. Yes, George. Thank you. I was just going to say, I, I really liked and was intrigued by David Allen's poem, yes. Time Again. <laughs> All the ways he wove in it's precious. But there's one thing I'd just like to bring up, and that is when he says, time waits for no man. Well, there's one exception, and that is if you're traveling at the speed of light. <laughs> oh, the time's waiting for you on the other side yeah that's you know, a good point <laughs> i'll have to add a line <laughs> when i spoke to the uh to you the, the fall rendezvous i did the, the keynote just a few years ago you know i talked about using post newtonian or uh metaphors from modern science and modern right. physics so uh so I just thought of that, but I would. <laughs> That's pretty. Yeah, I. I well, you know, it's you amazing to me. To that. <laughs> it's amazing yeah, to me everything that, that, that David managed to put in that poem. It was pretty fun. So, uh, yeah, David, you know. Your last line might be "Time waits for no man, except if you're traveling at the speed of light." <laughs> put it in parentheses. I'm now. writing it down right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness that's funny <laughs> i will say something about all the poems in the in the book and uh it goes for the prose as well but specifically the poems i feel like all the poems that are in this edition have a a flowing lyric quality that is hard to beat i mean these poems roll off the tongue and you know they just 
you read them silently in your mind, you read them out loud, and you know, you get so much out of the poems that are that we included in this publication. Um, and, and like Sarah E said, we had a lot more poetry this year than any of our other categories, um, which is unusual. I think over the years, uh, even before we were publishing, the Polk Street Review uh, has always been more prose driven. Um, and so this is a turn in contemplative expression in a way, I think, that some of us experienced. Um, so those who submitted prose pieces, thank you. We love them. We want them. Those that submitted poetry, thank you. We love them. We want them. Images, thank you. We love them. We want them. We want it all. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's really, it's, we're, we're not choosy, you know. <laughs> We'll publish almost anything, you know, any genre, any form, right? <laughs> as long as it's quality. We do like quality. <laughs> I would like to pose a question to the group uh, from Leah's piece got me thinking. Okay. Because uh, the idea then, then of... your mom uh, has a question. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry, mom. <laughs> I, I just wanted to compliment, compliment Kitty. Kitty's, yes. I'm glad you brought beautiful her on the beautiful job that you did uh, as a tribute to your friend. Yes. And you have indeed kept oh. her memory alive. Yes. My mom, Thank you. Thank my mom you. used to always say Thank that you. as long as someone said the person's name after they passed, they still lived. That's an old Macedonian belief. And when you submitted your piece, I just... I, you guys, all, most of you know my mom passed away several years ago and we were very close and, and I just wept when I went, read your piece. I wept for Kitty, Aww. you, I wept for Holly, I wept for my mom, I wept mm. for every, you know, I mean, it just, it really was beautifully written and you presented it so beautifully too. You really did. You did her, Aww, thank you did you. her justice thank and you. you did her some honor. And um, that's really special. And I, I know it's hard to present a sad piece, you know, and especially when other pieces in the presentations are funny or more lighthearted, but you did it beautifully and we really wanted to include it because that's what this book is all about. It's about all aspects of life and, and that's part of it. And, and you experienced something at a very young age that, you know, wouldn't wish on anyone. So. Yeah. Well, thank yeah. you. Yeah, I thought it, the theme because you know that hour could have changed could have you know any one little thing could have and i i will say that i think that that was one of the things i loved about your piece is that it didn't it didn't bring the theme you didn't like use the theme with literal words but i got that the hour within the hour she was there when the boy with the gun came that was an hour that changed everything and the gift of an hour and the memories that you have of the of her knobby knees and you know and her biting her finger i mean those those were gifts too i mean it was just beautifully written really really was oh, nice. really was good. i really appreciate the support thank you yeah. thank you i think everybody here is, is fantastic I, i'm really enjoying this i'm everybody's inspiring me actually. Well, good that's part of our goal too yeah. i might even try poetry <laughs> yeah you should you know i mean you don't have to write in a certain poem i like i write a lot of free verse so yeah. sarah e now what were you going to say about something leah's piece oh, i yes, think it was yes um yeah leah got me thinking with the, the story about bonding with her brother mm -hmm. over movies and that was relatable to me because I bonded with my brother and my cousins over the movie Spaceballs. Oh. And so I was curious uh, if that was an experience that anyone else had that you bonded with somebody over a specific movie. And if so, you can either put it in the chat or just say out loud, what was that movie or TV show? No, but we love, so I married an axe murder. That's a great movie. <laughs> uh, uh, my older sister and I, uh, there were two movies that were shown. There might have been more, but two that always stuck out that were shown yeah. every year at some point in the year when we were growing up. One was The Wizard of Oz. The other one was Heidi. And Mary Beth and I would watch Heidi, and it was always a challenge to see who would cry last. Or, you know, it was like we both would try so hard to not be the first one to cry. And, uh, and, you know, there was a bonding involved in that. 
you know, that sense of vulnerability that you can experience together and share, uh, I think had made a big difference in, in our relationship, uh, yeah. you know, even now as adults. Yeah. My daughter and I have bonded over the band Queen. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Long time ago. I've got two movie bondings. One was Star Wars. I remember going to the theater and watching it myself and then passing it on and getting my kids involved with Star Wars and then my grandkids. They all yeah. love it. But as far as my kids, I ruined them because when uh, uh, when when they would wake up in the middle of the night, I was the night person. I was mm -hmm. the night parent. And so I'd go into the living room with them. We'd sit down. And we'd watch horror movies until... Oh, jeez. <laughs> Not good, David. <laughs> and it was, you know, <laughs> the rest is history. <laughs> oh, but that reminds me of my dad. He loved a Boris Karloff Frankenstein movie, and he would mm -hmm. always say, wine, good food good you know and so we've done that in our family and my grandson even is like she's good or whatever i mean he's he's two and a half I mean, he's almost three you know so we that's a family thing and then i can i put in the chat zorro the gay blade if you haven't seen that movie you need to see that movie it's a funny movie and i can quote, I can quote the whole thing <laughs> And my family, my family's always like uh, doing lines from Zorro the Gay Blade too. So that's great. Thank you, everybody, for that discussion. That was fun. Yeah. The floor yeah. remains open. Yes, the floor remains open. Patrick, I can't remember. Did you work in uh, Merchant Marine for a while? I mean, is that Somebody mentioned you uh, and your uh, sea life experience. Is that, um, is that something you did? I, I don't remember. Who me? Oh, no. uh, are you talking to me? We, yeah, we, we blanked out. Yeah, Patrick. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, I uh, made uh, several trips to Europe and uh, the I set the, the story in 1970, but it was the trip that I made in 1974. And so I've always liked uh, the sea and sailing. So I've been on several freighters and uh, sailing yachts and uh, small uh, sailboats and uh, uh, big ships. Uh, so it's just something that I've, uh, I've done. Uh, and uh, so I went in 1969 when I was still in school in a, a study program uh, in Europe. And then I went again in 1974. And I lived in Europe. Oh, I hope we don't lose them. We lost them. They're frozen. Oh no, they're frozen. Here we are. Yeah, we <laughs> lost the thing yet. So uh, it was. Uh, oh boy. Oh gosh. I think we have to give up. Okay. Thank <laughs> Put you. Put it in Thank the chat. You. Put it in the we'll chat. Say, yeah. We'll say good night. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you guys so much. Bye, guys. Thank you. Oh. Gosh, I got to tell everybody, you know, when you're reading Patrick's and Jenny's pieces and Patrick submitted poetry, too. So we've got poetry from Patrick and and um, and prose. And we've got some beautiful, beautiful poems from Jenny. Great she just stuff. has a way with words and descriptives mm. that is hard to beat. So uh, thank you both for your submissions this year. And if we lose you to the Internet world, uh, have a wonderful rest of your evening. And, and and remember, December 31st may be the deadline, but you can submit any time. I just have folders on my computer for next year's book already. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you know, everybody can create. Um, I don't I, I it's not that I don't want to hear more about the creative processes and anything you want to say about any of your presentations, but I also want to remind you that Sarah E and I are happy to answer any questions you might have about um, the project, uh, how we go about anything we do with the book. I don't, I don't know if you have any questions about that, but um, if you have any, now's the time to ask us. Yeah. Alice, would you put in the chat how we can order books? Please? Oh yeah, I'll do that while Sarah vamps about something. <laughs> 
but yes. <laughs> um, uh, I will ramp that. Uh, probably the the best way to go about it is Lulu, correct, Alice? Yes. This is the way we get the most profits. Yes. Um. So so why don't we include uh, the link that gives us the most profits? Yes. Yes, Please. I yeah. will. Um. Oh goodness, I just I think I'm just going to go to the website and get it from the website. To be honest with you. That's just fine. So I give- will also vamp by saying, uh, if, if you have an idea for a good theme for next year, you can go ahead and spitball it now, either out loud or in the chat. Uh, I'm sure we'll probably do another poll. We usually do a poll over Facebook at some point mid-year. Um, so if you have ideas for what might make a compelling theme, I would love to hear that. Any suggestions? Well, my suggestion for this one was transplants. hmm um, thank you, Alice. I'm going to click on that now. Yeah, I'll put the Amazon one in there too because I don't want people to not do that. If you if you don't want, I mean, if you want to use Amazon, I don't want to, you know, tell people not to. It's just that Amazon just really does take a lot of the profit, and that's. I just know. I just clicked on that one. Um, yeah. But my my suggestion was transplants because I've only I've lived here about ten years, but. Um, my poem did stem from this theme because I looked up um, the man. Mm-hmm. I can't remember his name. Gaston Beauchelard. I'm probably not I couldn't that pronounce that even if I did remember it. I'm probably not pronouncing <laughs> it correctly. And um, just for any of you that don't have the book, this is the cover of the book. Oh, that's going to be hard to show because it looks yeah. just like my background. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there it is. Um, so, thank you. <laughs> that, I, that was weird. Yeah. Yeah. But I, uh, yeah, it is the color of your painting back there. But yeah. I looked him up and I, I read about him and some of the words that I was reading just inspired my poem. Uh, so. I just loved your poem. I thought it was very, um, it was, it, again, so many of the pieces I read and reread and reread as I was supposed to be doing things like formatting a page. I'd get distracted and read, you know, it's terrible. <laughs> you know, it's not, that's not, a, I'm not a good, I'm not a good editor in that regard. I'm supposed to be doing my job, you know, but I just, I, I became so familiar with everybody's um, submissions and, um, you know, m- several of you uh, of the people here in the in the zoom and just our presenters in general you'll see in the book submitted far more than one or two pieces which we love because then not only can we select uh, we don't always publish them all but we get to see more of the work and um, and so Chuck I know you submitted quite a few pieces uh, David submitted quite a few um, you know so we, we love that too we love when there's a lot of submissions and Christine to get three pieces of artwork done and submitted I give you high praise high praise high praise because I have become one of the slowest artists I know I'm so <laughs> slow to get anything done <laughs> so and and that the one I sub, I only submitted the one, mm-hmm. um, but I that is a Viator poem. Um, I learned that style. Uh, I from, was going to ask you if it was a form. You know, yeah, I of learned the repetitive... that. Yes, I learned that from Writer's Digest magazine, and I just took off. And that is almost the only style I write anymore. I really like it. Chuck, I think our first uh, publication, um, 2017, was Journeys or or Transitions. It was something that had to do with Journeys. That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's. I don't don't know if I was if I knew of it then or not. If I if I I, saw that, I'm not sure. I can't remember, but. it was because we took over the publication. We thought that the journey and transitions was a good um, uh, thing. So sometimes, I mean, this happens. People submit themes and they don't know we've already used a, a <laughs> theme that's very similar or exact wording to what they've what they've sent. So we get a lot of ideas that you know, are great ideas, but unfortunately we already used them already. So, you know, and I know that a lot of you guys are involved with other art organizations and contests and things. And, you know, themes are for contests, for poetry contests, for writing contests. So it's hard. It's, it is hard sometimes to come up with something that isn't 
something you see all the time. So um, we have a year. We, <laughs> we're not in a rush, you know. <laughs> we'll get something figured out. <laughs> but again, you know, the theme is just an optional prompt. It used to be kind of a required thing. We don't think it should be required anymore. It's just an optional prompt. If you, if you want to use it, use it. If you don't, send us what you got that has to do with anything. Because it's an anthology. It's not necessarily a theme-driven anthology anymore. We've kind of grown away from that. Um, uh, which, which is, I think, fun, kind of adds a little variety, yet somehow it all seems to go together mm -hmm. in the edition, you, you know, I don't know how that works, but it does. Mm -hmm. Good suggestions are coming in. Good, um, good. Well, when, when, when I say it, when I download the video and everything, the chat saves too, so I'll be able to yep. extrapolate oh, those into a list, into my Excel sheet <laughs> for <laughs> theme ideas for next year, you know. <laughs> Yes. Like everything else, selecting the theme is hard. Selecting the uh, award winners is hard. Well, the the hardest is selecting what gets published. I think because that's that's when sometimes we have to say no thank you to a piece or to a person, and that's hard. But uh, awards are hard. Oh goodness, um, what else? Oh man, these are good. Yeah. These are great themes for the beauty of the earth, healing, spike head embarrassments. We have France plants. Mm -hmm. oh, Transplants. I'm thinking of some like strange Frankensteinian <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> horror story. I'm thinking of David and his and his kids <laughs> in the middle of the night watching some horror movie, and you know, <laughs> <laughs> we could have all kinds of fun submissions. That's the thing, you know. You may have you may have a submission that means something to you it might mean something totally different to somebody else so yeah. the one thing i did during the uh, uh uh the first year of covid when we were all in our homes and couldn't go out and do anything or whatnot i uh watched every apocalypse or end of the earth movies yeah that i could possibly get on tv yeah I, you know I what? went through that phase too. Yeah, I rewatched some that I'd seen before, some of my old favorites. Like, I love the movie I Am Legend. I just think uh, it's so, it's it's such a strange movie. And then there's a movie I would highly recommend. It's not necessarily a, a apocalyptic story, but it's a it's virtually a one-man show. Uh, and I don't know if you've ever, if you guys are familiar with Mads Mikkelsen, um, but he played Hannibal in the TV series Hannibal. Mm -hmm. But he's a really good actor, and he made a movie years ago called Arctic, which the, you know, like Arctic, like the cold area of the world, not Arctic, Arctic. <laughs> and uh, it is a grueling, incredible performance. And I, and it's, it was perfect for kind of a, <laughs> I'm in isolation, hunkered down under my blankets, and this movie is terrifying me, you know? <laughs> I don't want to go out in the world, you know, because this movie's out there somewhere, you know. So you can find some some uh, some different ways to be kind of escaping, you know. And I do I do feel like trying to stay creative has been a bit of a challenge uh, over the last two years. Um, certainly, having deadline driven projects helps me. I've also missed a lot of deadlines uh, for <laughs> other things I wanted to be involved in, but, you know, other, you know, exhibits or competitions or whatever, simply because I, I just didn't meet the deadline, you know. So I really do appreciate everybody who who submitted, um, you know, by December 31st this past year, because I, I, I'm telling you, that wasn't an easy thing to do, even though you knew you had a year to do it, you know, <laughs> you, we give you a whole year still that, David, that December 31st creeps up on you. you know? I think David wants right you to now. look at his t-shirt. Deadlines Deadline. abuse me. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I know dead, deadlines is one of your favorite subjects. I know. <laughs> talking about what you did during the first My year of, book. talking about what you did during the first year of COVID. I uh, I watched every television show and movie of Star Trek in chronological order. <laughs> oh dear! Wow. I've never not, watched Star that, Trek, so I not I've in never, order that they were made. But never seen a movie, order. never seen an episode of any wow. of the Star Treks. But uh, oh, I'm wow. I'm a Star Wars girl, not a Star Trek. Oh, I'm a I'm a Trek. <laughs> I was wondering if people were making something more or less creative during COVID. I would, 
<sighs> I also watched a lot of online concerts and found a few musicians yeah. that I had never heard of before that I love. But yeah, yeah, yeah. that was mm-hmm. the main thing I did. That's, I, Kitty, I think your question is really a good one because, uh, as you know, as you guys know, we have a lot of things going on. Just one second, George, um, about the arts. We have online arts showcase exhibits that we have on our website. We um, do podcast recordings that are, you know, 15, 20 minute interviews with people about their arts journeys and things like that. And so I've in the past two years, I've talked to a lot of different artists and, of course, keeping up with our projects and what we're doing. And, you know, the answer to your question about creativity, is it up? Is it down? It honestly depends on the person. I have seen people who I know in the past have been just so prolific, be completely shut down for a year. Mm-hmm. And I've seen people who weren't that prolific yeah. suddenly just reams and reams of poetry or, or paintings mm-hmm. or whatever. So you know, each of us has that personal journey. And that's something that if any of you guys are ever interested in being on the podcast, just send me an email and we'll set up. It's all through Zoom. We just do it in Zoom. So it's easy peasy. And, um, you know, mm-hmm. I can, uh, we can figure out a time and, and do the interview and everything. But because that's the kind of stuff that interests me too. Your question is, is my question, you know, because there are days when I just think mm-hmm. I can't pick up my paintbrush. I know what I want to paint. Yeah. I know what I want to paint. Just can't do yeah. it. I can't. I, I I gained so much time. I, I ended up working remotely, totally remotely, which gave me two hours extra every day that I wasn't uh, driving. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> painting. I'm gonna write a lot. I'm gonna do that. And I was almost paralyzed. Yep. That's I, a good word for it. Yep. I, I was disappointed and I thought, well, maybe other people <laughs> No, please believe me, you're not alone. I'm, I am disappointed in myself and kind of like, how, how could I have wasted so much time this past two years? Yeah, that's but, what I thought. Maybe know. we were percolating. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. A great big explosion will happen. George, what did you have your hand up about? Well, I was just going to say, I think watching uh, Star Trek during the pandemic in chronological order is seems very logical. <laughs> I have to do our Dr. Spock. I've never seen it, but I can do the Dr. Spock. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't. I can't really do the the Spock thing. I yeah, my fingers. Well, maybe with my left hand, barely. Yeah. I'm, yeah. You know. You know where this comes from, don't you? I I used to know. It I comes don't from anymore. Vulcan. That's yeah. where it comes from. The planet Vulcan. <laughs> No, no. I mean, originally, originally, you know where this originally came from? No. All right, I got to go, <laughs> go get you some. I'll get something and show you. I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. Right uh-huh. back. We'll be here. <laughs> but I also wrote books, and I'm and I'm re rewriting a book, and I gained a bunch of weight. I put that in the chat. Yeah, yeah. I gained a bunch that's, of weight. I think. Just, yeah. Yeah, I definitely have gained a bunch of weight too, but. <laughs> I keep telling myself when the weather's better, I'll walk outside. Ha ha. You know? <laughs> well, I, I have to. I'm, I have to. Yeah, I don't know if I'm actually going to do that or not, but I tell myself. Well, I'm hoping, I'm hoping March will be okay because I'm going to start uh, restart my, my uh, live uh, open mic poetry sessions. Oh, your in-person ones? Yeah. 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 And, and Anderson, with that. Yeah. And, and also going to start the, uh, meeting twice a month uh, at the coffee shop where I had my uh, book Jeez, signing. You're very brave. I don't know how you're doing that. But the numbers. Well, in nobody got sick. We had about uh, 35 people uh, at the book signing and I haven't heard any reports of anyone. I, I hope that's true. I mean, that. you know, when the percentage of vaccinated people in Indiana is, is, you know, 52%, very low. that is abysmal. What, you know? what coffee shop is it? Oh, it's there the, you go. Uh, <laughs> What's that? <laughs> It it, it 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 it's called my old coffee shop. It's on Chesterfield, uh, on Main Street in Chesterfield, right across the street from the uh, Pizza King. If you've ever been here, yeah. Noblesville. No, no. Oh, no, no, no. Chesterfield. Chesterfield. Oh, 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 in Chesterfield. East of Anderson. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah, I know where Chesterfield All is. Right. But yeah. okay, George, what is that? First of all, was that a good coffee shop? <laughs> oh yeah, I liked it. I might try it sometimes. It's in Chesterfield on the main street, on the main drag. Yep. On the main drag. Uh, yep. yep. Right across the street from the Pizza King. And they're also uh, 
uh, in installing some uh, more kitchen uh, fare to uh, become a diner. Wow. So that'll be interesting. Because okay. they All also right. have antiques and flea market stuff. Huh. Okay, so what is that? Um, you see it? You, yeah, you see that it I has, saw it. It has the Vulcan sign on it, sure right? It does. Okay, now this was given to me by a colleague of mine who uh, happens to be Jewish. Oh. And, ah. uh, I looked at that and I, I tried to figure out, you know, how that came about in, in Star Trek. Well, it turns out that the Leonard Nimoy was the person who played Spock was yeah. Jewish. Jewish. And the producers of the show asked him, or the director, whomever asked him, to come up with some kind of a hand sign that would fit his character uh, that could be part of the Vulcan's so-called mm. culture. And so he remembered back, and when he went to a rabbinical school or something, and he remembered, when he was a kid, he remembered that, the sign, and he, he chose that. To be the Vulcan sign. That's cool. <laughs> what, what is it's the probably sign? Gene, it has its roots. Probably, it's probably it's, Gene Roddenberry, the creator of Star, Sh Tra Star Trek, asked him about but, it. Well, but what does it mean? Yeah. It, well, I can't remember. No, it has. Uh -huh. Well, you'll have ancient, to Google that. <laughs> it has roots in, in ancient rabbinical yeah, tradition. That's very I, cool. That yeah, I awesome. like that that plat the thing you have because it has the sun at the bottom. Yeah, you know? the sun is at the bottom, and yeah. you got those together. And, yeah. yeah, it's very cool. That is That's so awesome. interesting. Spike uh, knows a little bit about it. Spike knows about it? Spike, yeah. tell us. Well, um, during a certain um, Jewish denominations, when they do the Passover meal and the woman passes her hands over the two candles and then covers her eyes, they do that V symbol when they put their hands over the candles. Oh. Um, blessed are you, Lord God of the universe. I wow. love it. So it's like a blessing that, symbol. That's during the Seder? Um, it's during, pa uh, it's during, um, I'm sorry, not, I, it, it's during, I said Passover, I meant Sabbath. Oh, on the Sabbath. Oh, it's just so. Sabbath meal, the first Shabbat. meal. Is it for the Shabbat service or? Yes. Wow. Okay. Very cool. Well, that is neat. Yeah. Well, I'm not anyways, a Star all Trek I fan, is, but I like that story. <laughs> all I can I say to all of you, as I leave, after leave the meeting here, I, I just want to say to all of you, live long and prosper. That's a good transition because we are now at the end of our half hour discussion time. I have to yeah. separate mine with my live long and prosper. Thank you, George. And congratulations again for being our Thank award you. of merit winner this year. Thank you so much for your lovely submissions. All of them. I need right. to practice a palindrome. <laughs> Thank you to everybody you, who Kitty. was attending thank tonight. You. Yep. Thank you for the discussion. Chuck right. and David and Christine, thank you for all thank of your you wonderful much. pieces. You. Mona, you may have only sent one, but we loved it. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> you be coming. Yeah. Ed and Brenda, it's so good to see your faces. I haven't seen you guys in so long. Oh, I know. Yes. Thanks, so everyone, for all of your work. Uh, bless you. I, had, I, had three, I had three guests on here listening. That's too. awesome. Oh, That's yeah. awesome. That was nice. nice. Yeah, it, oh, Mona, nice. it's going to take me a little while to do all the editing, but I'll be sharing the links when, they're, when I have them all. Yeah, because I have several people who couldn't make it yeah i don't think anybody that uh presented is unwilling to have their presentation on youtube or or uh, the audio at least or something out there so okay. i think we're good to go with all the presentations and get everything up up there i just thank you all so much for joining us tonight and sarah e i couldn't do this without you i'm, I'm exhausted thinking what it would be like without you oh. and oh, i love you so you much and you just do everything so she's always there behind the scenes helping me, encouraging hey, You two are awesome. You two are just completely awesome. So thank yep. you so much. No, you're awesome. And you're oh, awesome. Yeah. You're awesome. <laughs> and you are. And you, and you, I swear, and you, and I've only been and drinking you. water. It's only water, but I sound drunk. You know? <laughs> That's what always happens with the book launches. Back when we were in person and in the Zooms, I just am just like I'm floating on some euphoric, 
you know, <laughs> happiness. So thank yeah. you guys for everything. This has been great. Yeah. It has been. Thank yeah. you, everybody. All right. Thanks, you guys. All right. Yeah. I'll be I'll be thank looking you. for your submissions for next year's book. It was, it was nice <laughs> to meet a few Thanks. of you. Okay. Yeah, Chuck All is right. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye, everybody. Bye. This has been At the Roundtable with Alice and Sarah E. of Community Education Arts. Our nonprofit organization is based in Noblesville, Indiana. You can find us online at cearts.org. We'd like to thank James Weston for writing our intro music and for his technical savvy. Join us next time at, at the, the Roundtable. Table.